Hello everybody, welcome back. We've got another commentary today. Today we are taking it as far back as I have ever gone on the channel for a commentary. This is 2008 Jacksonville. Horrible video quality, but I don't care because we are watching a 2008 freestyle with a stack lineup. It's Jacksonville, it's 2008. This is as good as it gets. Just freestyle, because that's all there was of this event, but I really don't care, because this is awesome. The fact that I get to do an event from 2008, super cool. I'm all about doing years I've never done commentaries on before, and this one is really going to be one of the coolest ones I've ever done. So let's get into the freestyle action. So freestyle will begin with El Toro Loco and Nathan Wink, the brother of Lindsey Wink. And like I said, video quality is not the greatest, but you can see what's happening. And we're watching a 2008 Monster Jam show. I don't really care. This is awesome. Nathan Wink going to start off with the van stack and the 2008 tracks with an ice slap wheelie. Always super cool. Only cars, only buses, big jumps, big ramps. I mean, this is this is the kind of quality Monster Jam freestyle track that made Monster Jam the great sport that it is today. These are the kind of tracks that brought all the fans to this sport. And it is really, really cool to see going back in time. I mean, we just did a 2015 commentary yesterday, and I haven't gotten to do a ton of these super old commentaries because there's just, quite frankly, not much footage for older events with tracks like this, and I can't use the videos from Monster Jam. So this is my only chance to do something like this, and it's nice to revisit the past. Good sky wheelie off of the car stack. That was the racing lane back in the day. Some people might forget the racing lanes used to just be cars. That was way back in the day. 2008, also the first year full year of me being a Monster Jam fan as he goes right over the bus stack. Not a lot of momentum, not a lot of pace. There's also not a lot of obstacles on this track, so you have to really stand out. Because a lot of people are just gonna do the same thing. I like that he just did that long jump there, though. Trying to change up that pace a little bit. All in all, though, really nothing going on in this freestyle run. I would love to see him get something good out of it. But he's also the first driver out, and back in 2008, they didn't really like to, they didn't go ahead with the setting the bar high, putting a driver out there who's going to go big first. They would typically just go with, yeah, whoever's the worst driver out there is going to go first. That typically is what happened back in the day. The classical Monster Jam way of doing things. Put the lowest driver on the totem pole out there to go over the track first so that the fans don't get their hopes up and then the drivers come out here and blow their minds. Always such a fun way of doing it. Does that kid have green hair? Nice. It's having an okay run, but this is definitely not even going to get itself in the sixes in my judging category. It was funny, I was watching the uh, Thanksgiving commentary marathon the other day, and uh, there was one video, I don't even remember where it was, but I was doing my own judging, and I didn't I didn't explain the fact that I stole the runs, I just said, yeah, I'm going to give that a uh, two, <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> I It was really funny, it was an arena show, I think it was, it was Lincoln, Nebraska. It was just funny. It was really funny because I watched a lot of those commentaries. I was like, man, I really used to suck back in the day. I don't know why anyone thought that stuff was good. But All right, that's the end of the run. So Mopar Magic will come out next. I will give El Toro Loco's run a 5.3. Mopar Magic, one of my favorite monster truck identities ever. Always had a sweet spot for this truck. Got to see it drive live a few times in Stafford Springs. Good wheelie. Got a lucky bounce on that one. Ooh, he's in a bit of an awkward spot. He's gonna have to back up. And this was at a time where there were judges at the events and they were told if a driver backs up, deduct their points. So this was definitely not the greatest of starts to his run. Let's see if he can pick it up the rest of the way. Mopar Magic was driven by a slew of different drivers. Ricky only was one of the more consistent ones. Carl Van Horn drove it a few times. 
I just always loved this truck. I don't know what it was, but something about the purple. This is really the first truck that ever made me fall in love with the color purple. I'm now a big fan of that color. And Mopar Magic, one of the first kind of instances in my life. I mean, I was very young when this truck was the thing. I mean, I was seven in 2008. So when I saw this truck competing, oh, wow. Well, he was off screen and did a nice sky wheeler that we didn't get to see. So when I first got to see this truck, you know, when you're a kid, you, you think, ah, purple and pink are girl colors, and I'm a boy, so I don't like those colors. But purple, purple's a very mutual color. And a, a neutral color, not mutual. What am I talking about? It's a very neutral color. I like it. Purple's a really cool color. Ooh, he's got a couple cool little wheelie bounces. Oh, a good sky wheelie again! Almost lost it. That bounce did not help him, but he was able to save the truck. Ricky Only, a man who never really had a ton of freestyle success, or success in general, but he was still going to go out there and put on a good show. I feel like we're in a time machine watching this event. I really do. It's really cool to watch stuff like this. And, I mean, we've got so many good drivers to come, too. These guys are just kind of warming up for us. These are the opening acts for the rest of the event. I love how the guy recording it is like occasionally completely focused on the truck and then occasionally not at all. It's really funny. I'll give that your lead at a six. Here's Chris Bergeron and Brutus. Chris Bergeron was such a such a long-standing driver in this sport. I mean this man was always out there. He was at so many world finals. I mean, it was him and Jim Kohler. Team Scream was Chris Bergeron and Jim Kohler. Chris Bergeron was a part of Team Scream because of how loud and aggressive he would be on the microphone. He brought Team Scream to another screaming level, and it was awesome. I mean, Chris Bergeron always had such high energy, and he would reflect it in the way that he drove. I mean, sometimes he was a little bit better than others, but a lot of the time, Chris Bergeron was such a crazy driver. Nice air. That jump and ramp is so high, it's hard to tell... But you can see right there just how high he was in the air, and he barely even hit it. So I'd have to imagine some of the drivers later are going to try and go really big as Chris is trying to extend the jumps each time, making the most of his time early on. Using that little car stack. It's really funny to look back at how simple the tracks were back in the day. It's really interesting because I was talking about 2015 in one of those commentaries about how I thought that was the golden era of Monster Jam. Because you look back at a lot of the old events, 2010, 11, where the lineup's just kind of stinky. But the more I think about it, you know, 2008, look at the lineup we've got, just looking at the trucks on the side, and we'll get to see them even more. I mean, 2008 was one of those years where, I mean, not every stadium was this way, but pretty much every stadium had a really stacked lineup. I mean, you can see all the trucks that are here. We've got a really good group. We've got Taz, Air Force Afterburner, Monster Mutt, Blue Thunder, Grave Digger. Like, really, really good quality lineup. Not necessarily as stacked as we saw in 2015, but, I mean, these are really good lineups. But you do get to see some of the disparity between the first few trucks out and the rest of them, which wasn't as apparent in 2015 and 16, which is why I feel like that's my favorite era of Monster Jam. As much as I love 2008, I mean, it's like I said, my first full year of Monster Jam is he creams the bus. Just kind of drug it down with him. I think he's battling some truck issues. There's been a little bit of, uh, yep, that's the end of his run. Too bad. I'm going to have to give that a 5.5. Here's Dan Evans and Destroyer. Airman Dan, they used to call him. And I can definitively say that this is the first time I've ever done a commentary with Dan Evans in it. I, I I don't believe I've ever done a commentary with Dan Evans. Always liked this truck. I always liked it a little bit more than most people. Dan Evans was a good driver. He was a decent driver, and I definitely liked watching him drive, but quite honestly, he was never, never at the level that he was, uh, or that I thought he was at. He was never the greatest of drivers, but he was always in the World Finals. I completely forgot what truck he drove before driving this one. I, like, entirely. I don't remember. Like, I remember he had a truck that he drove in the World Finals. Oh, it was the Destroyer. I'm sorry. It was just the body was different. Oh! Clipped the bus going over, and it almost toppled him over, but he did not. 
I I forgot that it was just the it was the same name. It was still the destroyer truck, but he had that different body style on it. He had that really old Chevy pickup body, and then he changed it. It might have not have been a Chevy, but the really old pickup body, and then he changed it to this. This truck was such a step forward for him. Clips the bus again, but not too hard this time. The old destroyer chassis truck body everything. I mean, it was entirely different. It was really old. I mean, that thing was rickety and broke very easily. Whereas this truck was really a well-built machine. This was one of the first trucks of its time to be built like this. It was very, very futuristic at the time. And it was a real shift for Dan Evans, who had been running this old-ass body and truck for a long time. So it was, a, it was a jump into the future, but I always liked it. I thought it was a cool little look. Dan Evans also loved to be the man who did the reverse moves. He always would do something, he would hit something and then hit it in reverse. I don't know if he'll do it here today, but it always was his trademark. He would jump over something and then do it backwards. And I remember the first uh, first World Finals that both him and Mike Vodders were in together. Dan Evans did the reverse move. And then Mike Vodders was mad that Dan Evans did it. Oh, is he going to try it? Yeah, here we go. The reverse move. Yay. Oh, <laughs> what a great time. Yeah, that's always fun. He was the, uh, he always did it in every single freestyle. Uh, it's just, it was so cool. Such a cool little thing that he would just throw in there. It, it's just funny how simple it was, but we all loved it. But yeah, so I remember when he did that, he did his first reverse move at the World Finals before Mike Vodders came out. Mike Vodders was pissed. I mean, he was angry that Dan Evans did it. And I remember in his interview, he said, well, I couldn't do my darn reverser because Dan Evans did it earlier on. <laughs> I was like, well, that's really funny. I will give Dan Evans a six. That was nothing great. Here's Scott Hartsock, Gunslinger. Rest in peace, Scott Hartsock. I've got my Scott Hartsock picture right here above me at all times with every commentary. I've actually got two of them, but this one's a picture of Scott Hartsock. Cool to see him in a Jacksonville event. Everyone always talked about how Scott Hartsock was the man of Florida, the king of Florida. He always was at every Florida event there would be. And the man had such a big following in the state because his family would always be there and everyone saw him at every event. He did Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa. He was always there. He was the man. One of the most legendary drivers of all time. I had a lot of people questioning why I didn't put this truck in my top 10 most legendary trucks of all time. And I'll be honest, it, it, I don't believe this truck is in the most legendary of all time. I mean, it's a really cool truck, but I mean, it didn't last very long. I mean, this truck was great, and I love Scott Hartsock, and the legacy he left behind was stellar. And he's definitely a pioneer, and this truck is very, very legendary. But, I mean, first off, the truck changed its name from Gunslinger to Slinger. The second that happened, it immediately lost its luster. And the name Gunslinger didn't last a very long time. It was only around for 10 or 11 years. And yeah, it was really cool, but it was it's not at the quality or legendary nameness of the kind of trucks that I had on that list. If you missed that list, the top 10 most legendary trucks of all time, you should check it out. I did it a couple weeks ago. I put a ton of time and effort into that. I, I spent hours, I spent probably five hours editing that video, but it was fun. I really enjoyed making it. Those kinds of videos are really fun for me. I've enjoyed making those Friday videos. And a lot of people seem to be liking them. They've actually started out performing the commentaries, which I find really funny. But I'm okay with it. I mean, if it brings content that people like, I'm all for it. And people seem to be liking them. I have not yet seen how the Captain's Curse Story video is done, because it airs tomorrow while I'm recording this video. But by the time the commentary's out, we'll know how it's performed. And I hope that does well, because it's a bit of a different kind of video. But... Uh, I mean, I'm trying out a bunch of different things. This is the time of year to do so. Nice little slap wheelie. This is the time of year to do so. Got to try out different stuff at a time where there's really nothing going on. Scott's really not done anything in this run, by the way, to talk about. That's why I've not talked about it. This is always these are always my good times to be talking about different stuff. I love Scott Hartsock, but you know, he well, once he got out of that 2005. Once he got past 2005, he was never at the same level. Solid slap. He did have that one year, though, that he made it back to the World Finals, which was really, really funny. It was a really cool time that he got to get back in the World Finals, got the new body style. It was really fun. I, for one, was a big fan. Might be eyeing a donut. There's a little dirt patch in the middle there. He kind of 
is not in the dirt patch, so he's not going to get the greatest of donuts. Bit of a slow nut. Alright. Well, this is the end of the run. He's just doing the rest for the fans. I'll give him a 5.5 for his freestyle. Nothing great, nothing special. But again, like I said, still very cool. I miss Scott Hartsock, one of the nicest men in the sport. So it's cool to watch a freestyle from him, especially from 2008. Such a interesting time. This is back when that the body was still pretty much the original. I mean, he had changed it, but this was arguably the most remembered. Here comes Randy Moore in War Wizard. Now, 2008, I mentioned it in my commentary that I did yesterday. I don't even remember. Whatever the one that we last saw, War Wizard. Might have been that Santa Clara one I did last weekend. I really don't remember. I, you guys might think that I remember the stuff I do. I don't. Um... Randy Moore, around the 2008 time, was really de decided, was, what am I trying to say? Randy Moore was really figuring out what his game was. I mean, he, he became a really solid driver around this time. I, don't, I just totally forgot how to English for a minute there. But yeah, Randy Moore was becoming a really good driver. He had really kind of settled in nicely and was one of the rising, slow rising stars in the sport, you could say. And I did talk about it at the time as well, the, how unique the body style was for the time period that it was in. I mean, you look at the, this truck compared to all the other trucks, not only that we've seen so far, but that you could see lined up on the side of the track. It's just so different. It's a unique look. It's a special look. Obviously, you really can't tell because this is a 480p video, but it just you could see the body style looks different. You can't even, <laughs> you can't even read the War Wizard on the side. The quality so bad. Oh, man. I wish, I wish that there was good quality footage of this time period, man. But I, I find it funny. I've talked about this with a lot of people. I personally feel like Monster Jam became as big as it did at the time that it did in the late 2000s. Oh, I thought he was going for the backside of that ramp. Wow. Um, it became as big as it did because there were no phones. There were no cameras. There were no social media. No one recorded it. If you wanted to see a monster truck show, you had to go. You had to go and watch it. But now, if you want to watch a monster truck show, you can watch it on YouTube. That's what I'm doing. I mean, look at me. I'm here watching a monster truck show. I'm quite literally proving my point. It's not going to stop me from going to shows, but I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to fly across the country to go to a show that I don't have some sort of vested interest in going to. You know, I remember back when I started becoming a fan around 2009 and 10, my dad would always talk about the idea of maybe we should fly down to Florida and go to one of those Jacksonville or Orlando shows. And yeah, obviously you could watch it on TV, but nothing was quite the same. Randy Moore's having a solid run right now, by the way. He's got some good slap release in there. Going along with what I said. It's also so cool to hear Scott Douglas providing that play-by-play -play in the background. It was something that they did a lot. I mean, people oftentimes didn't realize that Scott would provide full-blown play-by-play during a lot of these freestyles. You would always hear Scott Douglas' voice at the shows. Oh, he hit the cars totally crooked. Well, that's going to end his run, and I'll give him a 6.1. Oh, here's Mike Wine at Monster Mutt. I'm not going to speak about Mike Wine. <laughs> that's for sure. At least, I'm, you know what I mean. But, Mike Wine, funny story about Mike Wine, actually. Uh, actually funny story. First off, I always liked the way Mike Wine drove. He was a very solid driver. But at the 2008 World Finals, and I think I've told this story before, and I hate the fact that it's now a tainted story. But, uh, it's one of my coolest Monster Jam stories, and one of the things that actually really made me become a Monster Jam fan, uh, was Mike Wine, ironically enough, as horrible as it is. But, in 2008, at the World Finals, I saw him walking around the pit party, and I was, I recognized him because I was a really big fan, and I knew every driver. I'm like, oh my god, it's Mike Wine. And he was like, oh, hey, kid. And he said, you know, he said, I got a surprise for you later. He said, I'm going to be coming out of a dumpster in the Encore. And I was like, oh, really? He said, yeah. And he was like, it's going to be really cool. And I was like, all right, cool. And then he did. So I knew about the Encore in 2008 before it actually happened, and I was very proud of that. It's one of my favorite Monster Jam stories. Like I said, I hate the fact that I really can't tell it anymore, but whatever. It's still a fun story. I also love the old Monster Mutt body. I've, I've always played around with it in my head, and I am going to do a Monster Mutt ranking video one day. I liked the Monster Mutts when they changed them right away. I didn't like the Dalmatian, I'll be honest. I hate the Dalmatian change. 
never, never liked the new scale, the new dimensions. What? I've never liked the new <laughs> Dalmatian body. Monster Mutt's growing on me, though, because the Monster Mutt... Nice air. The Monster Mutt body has that kind of meanness to it. And the Monster Mutt truck can be a mean truck. Like, I like that. But something about the classic Chop Top Mercury that made the Monster Mutt famous. Just so cool. I also debated putting the Monster Mutt truck in the top 10 legendary trucks of all time. This truck is above Gunslinger, by the way, for anyone who was even thinking about it. Monster Mutt is definitely a very legendary truck. I mean, it's been around since the beginning of time, still around today. Matter of fact, we might not... Oh, yeah, we are. I was going to say we might not get a Monster Mutt next year, but I realized that, yes, we are. Bryce Kenny's driving it. Oh, that's right. They also announced... I forgot I didn't talk about it in yesterday's commentary. They announced that Camden Murphy's driving... What do they call it? The back-to-school basher or whatever? I don't know. The classroom... Oh, the classroom crusher. That's what it was called. Uh, another one that I did know about for a while, but I, was not, I wasn't going to talk about it. Uh, interesting idea, and I'm really intrigued to see how they uh, play it out, because I also know what the body design is supposed to be like, and it's going to be interesting. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But I remember they were they were really trying to figure out what they wanted to name it. There were a lot of different names that I didn't really like, and Classroom Crushers were pretty interesting. But yeah, back to Monster Mutt. You know, Monster Mutt's still around today. It's a truck that's lasted over 24 years, so... Anyone who would question the legendariness of this truck is a nice slap wheelie there by Mike Wine. Walked that thing all the way along the track. That was the arguably the best move we've had today. I mean, no one's really done anything yet. But again, these are the table setters. We've still got those big guys to come. So, I mean, if you're sticking around to watch the rest of this, it's it's a good thing you are. Just got the better drivers still to come. Kind of just crawling over stuff, though. Not really doing very much. Mike Wine was a, he was already he was not a kid when he was driving. I mean he was probably in his late forties, early fifties. That's the end of his run. I'll give that a six. I don't even know what I gave Randy Moore. Oh, is he coming out the top? Yep, there he is. Ah, here's Steve Sims and Stone Crusher. And before you think, oh yes, yet another poor freestyler. No, no, it's Steve Sims. Excuse me, Steve Sims in two thousand eight. This man can freestyle. I talked about it in the uh, commentary I just did yesterday about how Steve Sims was one of the best freestylers in the sport and a threat to win a freestyle championship. This man in 2008, he could freestyle. Uh, don't, don't come out. Don't count him out. He wasn't Damon Bradshaw or Lindsey Wink, but this guy, this guy's gonna probably take the lead. Look at the air. Good air. Very, very good air. himself a little close to those dumpsters, but that didn't really matter back in the day. Nobody cared about that. Now, the one downside about the drivers that came out later, and it was always something Tom Mentz would talk about, and Dennis would too, these tracks were made out of cars and buses and vans. So, as the night went along, more drivers drove over them, they crushed them down. So, you saw those first few drivers out, we're getting huge sky wheelies, big jumps, but now you're just kind of driving over it. There's not much to hit. So it's an inherent flaw of the cars and buses. As cool as it is to see. Wow! That's the first driver to go big on that move. Finally, somebody goes big off of it. And I told you, Steve Sims, don't count him out. He's having a good run so far. On pace to definitely take the lead. Love to see him hit the backside of that ramp, too. He is! Yeah! Steve Sims! Fearless in Jacksonville one of the guys in the background saying to hit it and he did love that you know what he hit the, had the longest jump of the day and the first one at the back side of the ramp i mean this yeah, that's what you want it's a good freestyle i mean it's obviously not burning it down but he's having a solid run he's getting better as every jump goes along he's improving for sure so i like it i'm i'm having a good time and steve sims seems to be too See if he can finish off strong, but he's keeping up that pace. This has been a solid, consistent run for Steve Sims in the Stone Crusher truck. I always love the story of how Steve Sims got his way into Monster Jam. They always talk about how he was Dennis Anderson's countertop guy. And then he found out, oh, you drive a monster truck? I want to drive a monster truck. And so he bought one and built one, and Dennis got him into the sport. It was just the funniest thing ever. He was just, he, he made countertops and installed them and then became a monster truck driver. Like, that's funny. 
But that's how everyone gets their start. No, not everybody starts as a, you know, a monster truck driver or a motorsports fan or, a, you know, driving race cars their whole life. Sometimes they just don't have their way into it and then they find one. It's a good run. I mean, very, very solid. The best we've had today, without a doubt. This has been very, very enjoyable. And to think we've still got those better drivers to come. It's going to be a good night. Not a lot of options to hit, though, for those guys, I will say, as Jim Kohler and Avenger will come out next. Steve Simpson Stone Crusher, what do we want to give him? I'll give him a 7.7. .7. I liked that run. Jim Kohler came out like a rocket on that first jump. Back at a time where Jim Kohler was still seen as one of the most dominant freestylers in the sport. He was not a two-time champ yet, though. He was... Oh, they put a... I can't even tell what that is, but there's something out there. There's an object on the track that was not previously there, but the, it's so grainy, I cannot tell. I genuinely have no idea what that is, but he'll crush through it, I'm sure. Jim Kohler loved to hit that kind of stuff. Jim Kohler was always a big fan of... Oh my god, I can't look at the screen. That is crazy. I don't get motion sick, but that was somehow very, very aggressive movement. I certainly hope... Oh! Truck shut off. Weird. Funny to listen to Scott Douglas, though. It's cool to listen to Scott Douglas. So this will end the run, unfortunately, for Tim Kohler. That's too bad. Yeah, he was on fire there. Too bad. Disappointing because I wanted to see what Jim Kohler could do, but not going to be a rewarding run there. It's funny hearing Scott trying to describe what's going on. Jim can't see the fire. Alright, that'll take us to Damon Bradshaw on the Air Force Afterburner. I wanted to leave that on because I think it's cool to hear Scott Douglas. Big air! Damon Bradshaw... In my top five favorite freestylers of all time. I gotta do a list of that. That would be a fun one to do. I always think of I always think of new ideas while I'm doing commentaries. Let's see, do I have one of those? Top five favorite for I know I don't. I gotta write it in there. Favorite freestylers of all time. I just love the way that this man freestyles. Nothing can compare to a Damon Bradshaw freestyle. There's a reason why he was a freestyle champion. At this point, he wasn't, though. He was still an upcoming star. He wasn't at that level yet. But he was certainly on his way. I mean, in 2008, I'd say you could... He, Damon Bradshaw would establish himself. See, going for that thing? He's hitting the thing. He hit it. It didn't break, so I don't know. I still don't know what it is, but he hit it. That was pretty cool. I would say you could safely say in 2008, Damon Bradshaw is one of the best drivers in the sport. He had established himself capable of winning a championship, but 2009 is obviously the year he won and the year that he really became one of the most elite drivers in the sport. At this point, he was still developing. He was not at his peak. Definitely in his prime, but not at his peak. He had a little way to go, but 2008 was really a good developmental year, turned him into the driver that he became and lasted. I mean, one of the best freestylers ever. Such a... Oh, wow. That truck went half the track on that one. Such a short career for a man who was so talented, too. I mean, you think about it. He started driving in 2006 and didn't drive past 2016. I mean, 10 years for a guy of this caliber? You just feel like he would have driven a lot longer than that. I mean, Lindsey Wink lasted about 14 years. It's just such a shame. Out of all the drivers that had to not last that long, it's just, it's really sad to me that Damon couldn't be one of them. Because I love Damon Bradshaw and the way he drives. Nothing would make me happier than seeing him come back into Monster Jam, and obviously that's such a pipe dream. But, you know, everyone always talks about, well, what if we get... Oh, good move! He didn't hit that straight, but it worked. We always talk about, you know, well, what if we get to see... Lee O'Donnell, or, oh, what if we get to see... What if we get to see Damon Bradshaw or George Bellhand come back? You know, it's very cool to think about those things, but they'll obviously have a Maybe an independent form if they decided to, but... 
It's like we got C. Elvis Linez now driving for Team Overboard independently. I was hoping he'd be on a tour this year, but he's not. But, you know, you might see him back in Monster Jam in the future. Solid Slappy. This has been a good run, but Damon hasn't done really a ton. And like I mentioned, this track doesn't have a lot to be really do. There's not a lot of jumps, not a lot of options. You really kind of have to manufacture something, and it's not easy to do that. It's really not. There is not much to work with here. It's like, I would walk out there and be like, this is it? You gave me three obstacles? <laughs> what do you want me to do with this? Like, you, you really expect me to do something crazy with just three things? He's definitely having a good run, and I would put him in the top spot, but he's not going to get a huge number. Alright, I'll give that a 7.9. Nothing really over the top, but it was fun nonetheless. Fans loved it, so that's great. Here comes Lindsey Wink and the Blue Thunder. This was always such a fun truck to watch in 2008. A built for tough Blue Thunder. Lindsey drove the heck out of this truck. It was his first year driving the Blue Thunder truck, too. He drove Iron Outlaw for a couple of years before this. Got the call to drive for the built Ford Tough team, and he always did a... Did they, they flip the truck back over that's over there? Why would they do that? <laughs> well, Lindsey's gonna... Nope. Yeah, he's gonna hit it again. And this time it got pretty destroyed. That thing is toasty. Jacksonville always had so many fans in the building. You could hear how loud they're getting. This is, this is classical Monster Jam right here. And Lindsey Wink, this is at a time where he was really one of the top in the sport. I mean, everyone thought that he was going to win a freestyle championship in this Blue Thunder truck, and I'd argue that this is his best time period. This is the peak Lindsey Wink. Maybe not in 2008, but he was getting there. This was certainly the heart of his prime. Oh, I remember the event that he had. Nice air, where they put a, they put a camper on the top of that kind of ramp, and he jumped through it did a little bicycle, the fans went nuts. That's really funny. Imagine if those fans back then saw the stuff that drivers could do today. They would lose their minds. Go for the back side of the ramp, and the second time he didn't really hit it very hard. Like I said, there's just not much to do. It's like, what, what else are you going to do on this track? There's nothing to, nothing to make out of it. You've got to hit the bus sideways, you've got to hit that ramp sideways if you want to do something cool. Lindsay's trying, but all right, good jump, but again, he's really not seeing much come out of it. He's going to cross-thread the ramp like Damon did. I gave Damon a 7.9, and I don't think Blue Thunder is going to take the lead from him. He is really not doing a lot. Oh, he hits the ramp sideways, flips over, and done. And like I said, you got to make something happen. And he tried, and it didn't quite work very well. Here's Adam Anderson and Taz, and this is a freestyle I'm thrilled to see. Oh no! Oh my god, he flipped over on one turn! Oh, okay, they let him keep going. I was so angry. Alright, so this is an encore. Great! I was gonna say, you can't! I mean, Adam Anderson done in 10 seconds? That's awful! This is the kind of stuff we need in Monster Jam today. Flip him over, let him keep going. I always have a thing. Some guy in Las Vegas said it once, and I love it. If the truck flips over within the first 35, 45 seconds, I'd even go so far to say a minute. If it flips over the first minute, and it can keep going, flip it over and let him do an encore. Why not? I mean, why not? There's no reason not to. And Adam Anderson's showing you right here why you should. I mean, he's already having a good well, start to the run. I also never gave Blue Thunder score. I'll give it a 7.5. Oh, no, Adam's done. Well, that was a disappointment. Here's Randy Brown and Gravedigger. I was hoping to get a Dennis Anderson 2008 freestyle, but I will settle with a good Randy Brown run. Randy Brown drove the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle truck in the 2008 World Finals Encore. The fans are going crazy. Listen to this. And the crowd was so loud just when the truck hit the track. It's just so funny how this truck has become 
so legendary. I mean, yeah, obviously Dennis drove it in the ground, but I mean, it's just so cool. This truck is so iconic in the monster truck world. I did name it the most legendary monster truck of all time, and people tried to argue me about it. There was one guy who was really arguing for Bigfoot. Um, you can't. He didn't listen to what I had to say. He didn't listen to my argument. That's all right. I'll die on that hill. Grave Digger's the most legendary monster truck of all time and will never be top. Ever. And Randy Brown, one of the many drivers who has gotten to drive this truck. I, you know, my dad had a good idea. I'm going to throw it onto the list of ranking Grave Digger drivers of all time. I feel like that would be fun. Let's rank Grave Digger drivers. I can also rank Max D drivers, so I'll do that too. The list gets longer and longer. It's just I've got so many ideas. And once first quarter comes around, I'm not going to be able to do them <laughs> at all. So far, Randy's having an okay run, but I'd like to see him pick up that pace a little bit. This is Grave Digger. It's 2008. I want to see you drive a little bit harder, Randy. You're holding back on me a little too much. Going to cross thread? Okay. Nice slap wheelie, but again, I want to see some more. Drives right through the bus. Very lackluster freestyle competition overall to this point, but there's still time to make up for it. Good jump. Doing what he can with what's out there on the track, I will say that. He is not going above and beyond, but he's definitely taking what's been given to him and is doing about as well as he can with the... Yep. I was about to say, that motor just died. Yeah, no, you could hear that motor just had a stroke, unfortunately. That's going to be the end of the run for Grave Digger there. There's no... <laughs> Never mind, here he goes again! I don't know what the heck happened to the truck that made the motor sound like that. I thought for sure he had knocked something loose, but... He's back out there! Great! You know what? Oh my god, listen to it! Oh! There's something rattling. He's got a belt loose or something. The fact that he's doing a donut, too. With whatever's wrong with it. Pretty impressive. And this counts for scores. This isn't an encore. This is just the continuation of the run. Nice jump. He's gotten the biggest air consistently out of everybody. You can hear the whatever it is rattling around in there. I'm... This is going to be close between him and Damon Bradshaw when all is said and done. There you go. A donut into the... Whatever that is. That was a good finish. I'll give him the lead at an 8.1. That was a good freestyle. But there's still one guy to go. And it's Tom Mentz. Tom Mentz and Maximum Destruction. 2008 Tom Mentz. Sign me up, man. I am so ready. This is what I've been waiting for all day. To do this commentary and see Tom Mentz freestyle in 2008 on this awful track with nothing to do. And he just got huge air on the backside of the bus. Goes to kiss Damon Bradshaw. Spins her right around and he's going to hit the bus from the other side. No problems for Tom Mentz. Tom Mentz is not going to be satisfied with why is he going f as fast as he can <laughs> into the dumpster. Tom Mentz is not going to be satisfied with what this, tra this track has to offer. He's going to drive a lot harder, and hes I guarantee you he's going to start manufacturing wild-ass moves because he has the ability to, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if it's that bus or that big jump fully sideways to make something wild happen. If there's not smoke on... Oh, my! Well, he did something, and it worked! I don't know if that was what he was trying to do in the moment. I think that was more just a bit of luck, but it paid off. So here we go. There's Tom Mentz. Tom Mentz is Tom Mentzing. The math, the math, you know, you know the saying, the math is math, and, well, the Mentz is Mentzing, most definitely. Oh, he's on the sidewalls. I think his run's going to be over there. Unfortunate. Well, that was fun. I had a good time. Uh, I'll give Tom the win for that, even though it didn't last very long, but that was really all I could think about. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. We will see you all in the next one.